Thanks, you guys, for coming out on this hot night. Um, uh, what am I going to do? I'll, I'll try, just try to, you know, maybe do about 20 minutes, and then we'll talk. We'll just talk, you know, and questions and stuff. And I'll kind of tell you about uh, how this book came to be written, and then sort of a little bit what it's about, since the Six Day War is sort of obscure, I think, in most people's minds. Um, let me tell you about my my own self as a Jew, my background as a Jew. I found out <laughs> that I was Jewish when I was 13 years old, and that is uh, it's not as uncommon as it might be. But that was kind of a that was kind of a shock when it you know when uh, my dad laid that one on me. So I sort of decided <laughs> at that point, this is like 1956, after about a week of kind of shell shock, I decided that I would get with the program. You know, if I'm a Jew, I'm going to kind of you know get with it. You know, so I decided that I would go to Temple and learn the stuff. And there was no Temple in my hometown of Pleasantville, New York. So I hitchhiked to the next town, Chappaqua, where the Clintons live. And uh, but the weird thing was that the real Jews there at the Temple rejected me because I was like this geek Jew from the next town that they looked down on, that it had no bar mitzvah, couldn't speak Hebrew, and had a very bad attitude about being Jewish. So after a little bit of trying, I sort of gave up and kind of went back to being a regular American. But through this whole era, you know, growing up, I was looking around like any other guy for like role models. You know, I thought, well, what, what Jews are out there that I can relate to, you know? And this is the 50s and the early 60s, so I thought, what is this, like Borscht Belt comedians or Molly Goldberg or something? I just could, there was just nothing that I could relate to. So I never could quite get with the program. And then came the Six Day War, 1967. And that was this thing that suddenly appeared, up until that time, I don't even think I was very much aware that Israel even existed. Suddenly there was this thing where the state of Israel was uh, hanging by a thread, about to be overrun by hordes of enemies, and then suddenly in six days they turned it completely around and on TV you saw Jewish fighter pilots, Jewish paratroopers, Jewish tank guys, and Moshe Dayan with the, with the eye patch, and I thought to myself, well now, finally these are some Jews I can relate to. These are guys I can look up to, a whole different style. So. Flash forward to maybe 40 years later, and I have a writing career and I have written books, particularly military-themed, war-themed books about the ancient Spartans, uh, Alexander and the Macedonians, the British, et cetera, et cetera. But it occurs to me that I've never done anything about my own people. Not to mention the fact that the Six-Day War is an incredible story, just in terms of purely in military terms, it ranks with Thermopylae or Gettysburg or anything like that. But beyond that, it's a great story because it's a story of return from exile and the whole climactic moment at the Western Wall. I don't know if you guys know about that, but I will get into that. So anyway, that was, I decided that then, this was like about three years ago, Paul knows about this because he was with me all the way on this thing. And uh, um, so I decided to do that. So the first thing I did so I had never been to Israel, didn't speak Hebrew, knew nothing about it, so I called up my friend David Mamet, who lives not too far from here, and he's totally connected over there. I said, David, who do you know in Israel that is connected in military circles so that I can go over there and, and he can open doors for me? So he said, come by my house for Shabbat dinner this Friday, and I'll introduce you to somebody. And standing there, it's too bad we don't have the capacity to project any anything. And I don't know if you guys can see this picture. Anyway, it's a picture of a fighter pilot. So meeting, meeting him there at David's house was a guy named Lou Lennart, who lived in Venice. He was 92 or 91 years old at the time. And he had been a Marine Corsair fighter pilot on Okinawa in World War II flown against the home islands and so on and so forth, a, a hero. And when the state of Israel was founded in 1948, Lou went over and flew for the fledgling Israeli Air Force. And in fact, he led the first fighter mission of only four planes that saved Tel Aviv and saved the whole country. I'll get to that story too. So Lou and I sort of immediately bonded. I was a Marine, he was a Marine. and. He just sort of adopted me like a son or a younger brother, and he said, I'll take care of you. I'll set you up with everybody over there. So then I went over there, and uh, 
I was there for three weeks and then for six weeks, so nine weeks total, interviewing 67 pilots, paratroopers, et cetera, hundreds of hours, and then came back and put it all together. Um, so let me, now let me tell you a little bit about the Six-Day War in context, just to give you a, a sense of it. I won't take long, I promise. Um, 1000 BC, David, King David of David and Goliath fame, captures the city of Jerusalem. And the kingdom of Israel kind of comes into its own in the Holy Land. Uh, God commands a temple to be built, but not by David, by his son Solomon. Solomon builds a great temple in Jerusalem. The, the Ark of the Covenant is there, Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, the Holy of Holies, all that kind of stuff. On, on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Now cut to 587 BC, the Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar conquer Jerusalem, burn the temple to the ground, and dispatch all of the Jews to Babylonia, where I know you guys have heard the Bob Marley song, if you don't know uh, Psalm 139, by the rivers of Babylon there we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. So the Jews, after a while, come back, rebuild the temple, cut to 70 AD, the Romans come to town, they burn the temple to the ground, and expel the whole, all the Jewish people out into the world. So. Um, and by the way, both of these events happen on the same day of the Hebrew calendar, the ninth of the month of Av. Now this, when the Romans expelled the Jews, this was the start of the diaspora, where the Jewish people for 1900 years lived as aliens and exiles in the countries of others, all the while longing for home for Jerusalem, which would be, you know, that famous phrase, next year in Jerusalem, which always seemed to be a dream that would never be fulfilled. And because they were exiles and aliens in other people's country, all the terrible things that happened, pogroms, persecutions, inquisition, all leading up to the Holocaust. So, um, I know I'm getting, a, I know this is a little long-winded, but bear with me here. Now I'm gonna cut to France. 1890. Has anybody here heard of the Dreyfus case? Does this ring a bell at all, the Dreyfus affair? In France at that time, there was an artillery officer of Jewish descent named Alfred Dreyfus, who was accused falsely of treason and convicted, sent to Devil's Island. But what happened at that time was, in his trial, Emile Zola wrote the famous, his famous editorial, Jacques in defense of Dreyfus this wave of anti-Semitism came up where mobs were in the street chanting, kill the Jew, kill all the Jews, etc., etc. And at that time there was a secular Jewish reporter from Austria-Hungary named Theodor Herzl was there covering the trial. And when he saw this outburst of anti-Semitism, he was just appalled and horrified. And the conclusion that he came to was that the concept of assimilation that Jews could live in the countries of others and that it would work was never gonna work. If, it could, if this could happen in a country, a civilized cultured country like France, where the Jewish community had been thriving for a thousand years and where thousands and thousands of Jews had served and died for the armies of France, he said, this is never gonna work. So he said, came to the conclusion that the Jewish people had to have a state of their own. And when I was researching this book, I went to Paris and was with a, a two-star general named Yossi Ben Hanan that I was interviewing. He drove me to this street where the original, the first Chanel boutique was on the corner, the Rue Cambon, and to a little plaque on the wall above uh, this hotel. And it, the plaque said in Hebrew and French, here in 1895, Theodore Herzl, the founder of the Zionist movement, wrote the book, The Jewish State, that foretold the resurrection of the State of Israel. So finally, cutting ahead, 1948, the State of Israel is founded. And for the first time, Jews are back in the Holy Land. So now to return to my friend Lou Lenart from Santa Monica from 1948, as soon as the Jewish state declared itself, 1948, May 14th, five Arab armies, Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, and Jordan, attacked, crossed the border to drive the Jews into the sea. My friend Lou saved Tel Aviv, I'll shortcut that thing. So what happened in this, this was called the War of Independence, and a big battle